Well, good morning and welcome to worship this morning. I'm Pastor Josh, and it's a joy to have everybody gathered wherever it is that you are gathered. It's a joy to have you all here with us um, on this kind of rainy day outside. Some storms went through this morning, um, but it's uh, turning out to be a nice day. It's a joy to have you you with us. And like I said, I am Pastor Josh. Um, just a couple things as we get started. Don't have too many announcements, but just want to say um, more specifically to those who are our Cornerstone members, um, we and from Minnesota, really. Um, so we heard yesterday from our governor, uh, and we are able, so the restrictions on churches have lessened a little bit. We're able now to gather um, in, in t- at 25% cap- seating capacity of the church based on the fire marshal. Well, for us, that's 220 um, is our seating capacity. So we also have our bishop who gives us others. So there's so many different moving parts in all of this. But what, the, the, what I want you to know is that we are not going to be gathering starting this upcoming week in, in, uh, at that 25% capacity. We're going to stay with the 10 or less. That is our bishop's um, guidelines. And there will be an email that comes out on Tuesday that will have links and all of that to the Minnesota Annual Conference's um, kind of guidelines for how to move forward and how to gradually reopen and what is the safest way to, to do so and what's best for, for us as Cornerstone and our building and all that. There's so many different moving parts in that. So be looking for that email to, to come out um, this week. And, well, I think that's all the announcements and everything else that I have. We're going to do a couple songs this morning. Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing and Oh For a Thousand Tongues to Sing will be our, our two hymns for this morning. We are doing two hymns. They were a couple that were, were um, requested that we do. And this is uh, the last few weeks we've been doing um, You Asked. So these are a couple songs that you asked for. And the message today is also something that um, somebody requested. So as we open our time this morning, let's, um, let's have a, a word of prayer, and then we will take a time to, um, we'll sing, we'll do a, a little time of offering as well. So let's pray. God, we thank you for gathering us um, wherever it is that we are gathered. We'll th- we're thankful that even though we're apart, we are still connected as, as the church, and the church never stopped. We are still the church. The church is not a place. The church is a people. And, and we're thankful, God, that even though we can't gather in person, we're thankful that we are still called to be the, the church, the hands and feet of, of Jesus. We ask God this morning as we, we are uh, joined together in worship, wherever it is that we are, we, we ask God that your presence would be in, in homes and in this place and, and wherever it is that people are are gathered and we we just ask God that that your Holy Spirit would be everywhere that that we are and you have said where two or three are gathered you are there we ask your presence to be with us and we ask God that everything we say think feel and do would be pleasing to you we ask this in Jesus name amen now as we sing our first song um I encourage you to go to the, the Cornerstone website, cornerstonemarshall.org, and somebody will post a link um, in the comment section of the, the Facebook Live. You can see that down there. Put a link to the, the online giving. But if you go to the cornerstonemarshall.org and go halfway down, and then on the right side you'll see a uh, kind of a line of blue buttons, and it'll be the one that says Give Online. You can also mail those into the church if you you don't feel comfortable giving online. So as we go into a time of offering, um, let's join together and we'll sing Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing Tune my heart to sing Thy grace Streams of mercy never ceasing Call for songs of loudest praise Teach me some melodious song sung by flaming tongues of love. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, mount of God's unchanging love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by. to arrive at home. Jesus 
God, we thank you for all that you have blessed us with and giving us this opportunity we have to give back a portion of that to you. We pray, God, that you would take these gifts and these tithes and these offerings and and put them to use, God, building your kingdom. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so this morning, I'm going to attempt to do something that that philosophers have been trying to do really since the beginning of time, but none of them have been able to do that and able to answer this question to everybody's satisfaction. So I'm going to attempt to do something that no philosopher throughout history has been able to do. We'll see how I do. Now, I know that the person who who requested this who requested this topic, I know that they said it kind of sarcastically and joking, but you asked for it, so I'm going to do it. What is the meaning of life? When this person requested that, there was a a smile that uh, that accompanied that text message. Pastor, you should do a message on what is the meaning of life. Well, okay, I will. I'm always up for a challenge. So that question, what is the meaning of life, It's a philosophical question, but that question is really, it's a genuine human question, and it's a question that that all of us have probably asked at some point in in our lives. It might be a question that's asked maybe in despair or hope, um, or out of cynicism or sarcasm, or out of maybe out of a, a sincere curiosity and desire to have goals and guidance in life. Now, however it is that we raise that question about the meaning of life, if you think about it, if you really think about that, that question, what is the meaning of life, it's really our most basic and fundamental question, isn't it? What is the meaning of life? So it shouldn't come as a surprise to us then that, that Jesus actually deals with that question, what is the meaning of life, and Jesus himself answers that question. Now surprisingly, if you think of who Jesus was and when he talked and when he answered some of life's deepest and greatest questions, surprisingly, the answer that Jesus gives, it's not, he doesn't give it in the context of, of you know, talking or arguing with the, the Jewish leaders. He doesn't do that. He doesn't do it in a discussion with his disciples, you know, one-on-one. And he doesn't do it in in like the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus deals with a whole host of, of issues. Jesus tackles the question of the meaning of life in the context of a prayer. It's prayer. So let me give you a little bit of of context to kind of set this up a little bit. So Jesus and the disciples, they've they've just finished the Passover meal. And Jesus is thinking about his crucifixion, which is going to happen in about in in the next 24 hours or so. Jesus knows that he's going to he's he's about to leave his disciples alone in the world. So Jesus goes before God, his father, and he prays for them. He prays for them. Because he knows he's going to be leaving them alone in the world. So he prays. Now, listen to Jesus' prayer. 
It's found in, in John chapter 17. If you want to, to read the full version of that, it's found in, in John 17, starting at verse 1. I'm, I'm not going to read the full, uh, the full prayer. I'm just going to lift out a, a few key verses. This is what Jesus says in, in this prayer. Jesus says, while I was with them, I protected them and I kept them safe. Now, remember, this is a prayer. While I was with them, I protected them and I kept them safe. But I will remain in the world no longer. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name that you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. Father, the time has come. Glorify your son, Jesus said, that, that, that your son may glorify you, for you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Now, it's right there, right there. Jesus is done talking now, or I'm done reading those verses, but it's right there, that third verse. It's there that Jesus tells us the meaning of life, and the, of eternal life, really. And, and in essence, he's telling us the meaning of life itself. Jesus says, now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So essentially what Jesus says is that the meaning of life is that you have a relationship with God and me, his son, Jesus Christ. So now I could stop talking now. I could stop preaching because that's the meaning of life. That is the meaning of life. But Jesus himself, he, he understood he understood just how hard it was going to be, not only for the disciples, but for all of us to come to that very simple realization in life. And, and so Jesus prays for two key things in, in the context of this prayer, because he knew how hard it was going to be for, for his disciples and all of us to recognize that. So first, Jesus prays so we would understand the meaning of life. He prays for our protection from the world. We need protection from this crazy, crazy world because the world can just steal life from us. You know, look at where we're at now, distant, in the, in the midst of a pandemic and getting messages from, from over here and over here and over here and, and trying to just make sense of life in these days. The world can steal life from us. The day in, day out tediousness and, and challenges of life can be overwhelming. If you've been on Facebook at all the last, last few months, you, you see the challenges of life with, with parents who, who now are their, te their, their kids' teachers. And the kids, you know what I realized? The kids, they're always there. They're always there. And I love my kids, but they're always there. They always have needs and questions and challenges. Challenges of life can sometimes be overwhelming. Sometimes life can, can just be too long. It can be too hard, and life can maybe be boring, and we can lose our Christian hope and joy, and we can then give in and succumb to despair. Many of us have been there. During these times when we're, we're separated from our friends, separated from our, our family, separated from our, our church family, separated from those who, who give us a source of life and a source of being by ourselves. Sometimes life can be too long, too hard, too boring, and we can lose our Christian hope and joy and we can give in to depression and despair. And it's then that, that if we're not careful, we can try to find meaning in life in things other than God. We look for escape through, through things of the world and, and worldly pleasures, and we, we give in to all of the trials and temptations that, that come our way. Jesus understood that. He understood all the trials and all the temptations, and that's why Jesus prayed, Father, protect them from the world so that they will be one as we are one. You know, we have 
policemen who, who guard our communities, keep us safe. We have laws and rules that, that protect society. We have uh, parents. We, as parents, we, we teach our kids honesty and, and integrity so that our kids will grow up to hopefully have decent morals and, and good behavior. We, we all need someone to keep us safe. So why should it surprise us then that, that our souls, our spirits need to be safeguarded from the corruption of the world? Jesus prayed for his disciples that, that God would protect them and that God would keep them from losing their way, from losing their direction in the world. Jesus knew that. He knew that only by God's protection. He knew that that's how his disciples and ultimately us would find the meaning of life. Jesus understood how hard it was going to be for us to understand the meaning of life. It's hard. It's hard because there are so many ways to, to just get lost in this, the craziness of the world. But the way to find the meaning of life is open. And it's open because God is there to protect us and guide us and to give our souls the security that we need in order to hear his call on our life and to follow that call. Now that brings me to the second part of, of what Jesus prayed for. So we would understand the meaning of life. Jesus prays that we would know God. So we would know God. So go back to the Old Testament, Moses. When Moses brought down the Ten Commandments from Mount Sinai, Moses, he, he called all of Israel together. He gathered them together and he read from the stone tablets. He read the commandments before the people of Israel. And, and then Moses summed up these Ten Commandments using these words. He said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Now fast forward to the New Testament. When Jesus was asked by an expert of the law what the greatest commandment in all the law was, Jesus echoed those words of Moses and he said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And then, fast forward a little bit more, on the evening before his crucifixion, Jesus prays that the disciples will come to know God in a personal way. Again, he's just, he's just echoing those words of Moses and those words that Jesus had already said. He's echoing the words of Moses. He's restating the lines in a brief phrase, that they may know you, the only true God. Now, Jesus isn't talking about knowing God like you know some mundane things in your life, like how to ride a bike. Jesus isn't talking about knowing God like, like you know your ABCs. Jesus is talking about knowing God in a, a deep way, in an intimate way. Jesus is talking about knowing God personally. That's what he's praying for. And I'll be the first one to admit, friends, that's really hard. It's really hard to know God intimately. You know, it's hard enough to let our family and our friends, those we see daily, in to the door of our hearts, let alone God. And yet that's what's being asked of us. But the thing is, that's the only way to find meaning in life. And it's the only way that, that your kids and your grandkids and your friends are going to find meaning in their lives. And when Moses read, read uh, all of Israel, that the, the Ten Commandments, he then summed them up by saying, he said, love God with all your heart. And then he adds something at the end that's important. He says, teach these commandments. To your children. Teach them to your children. Now, of course, the best way to teach your kids the meaning of life is to live it yourself in your home. The best way to, 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 to teach your kids the meaning of life is, is to, to do it, to be it, to live it. The best way to teach that and model that to your friends is to live it and be it and do it. Now, if our kids or, or grandkids or, or friends see us putting other things ahead of God, then they're going to become discouraged and, and disillusioned. And then most likely they're going to follow the same path. If we put other things ahead of God, if, 
if, if God isn't primary, you think the kids are going to follow the same path of their parents or the grandkids follow the same path of the grandkids or friends follow the same path of, of other friends? God has to be first. And kids and grandkids, they know whether or not you love God with your whole heart. Kids are smarter than we think. What kids want to see is, is parents and grandparents that have, have such love and reverence for God that they bring God into every area of their lives and, and put him first in everything. What our friends want to see, those who, who live apart from God, what they want to see, even if they don't know it, they want to see that we love God and bring God into every part of our lives and we put him first in everything. Kids want to see whether their parents love God enough to obey him. Our friends want to see that we love God enough to obey him. God gives us protection and God desires that we have a personal relationship with him. That's what Jesus prayed. Protection from the world and to have a relationship with him. Now here's the bit that's going to maybe sting a little bit. I'm not talking to the non-Christian community this morning. I'm not talking to people who are living apart from God. I'm actually talking to the Christian community. I'm talking to believers. Remember that Jesus' prayer in John 17, who was it for? It was for his disciples. Jesus wasn't praying for, for necessarily for those who are, I mean, he was. He's always praying for everybody. But Jesus' prayer was specifically for his disciples. So I'm talking to the Christian community. Those who had, Jesus was praying for, for those who had already walked with him. He was praying for those who had ministered with him and for people who had been with him for three years. Friends, that's us. We have a need to deepen our relationship with God. And Jesus prays that we'll do it. He prays that we would do it. So will you do it? Will you do it? Pray that, that you'll come to know God more deeply. If you already know God, pray that you'll know him more deeply. If you don't know God, pray that you would know him and then grow in that knowledge and know God so intimately, so intimately, that he becomes a part of everything that you do. Pray that you'll come to know God so that you can be one even as Jesus and the Father were one. The Lord our God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. That is the meaning of life. Let's pray. God, we, we thank you that you have called us to love you. We thank you that you protect us from the world, that you keep us safe from everything that, that might harm us in whatever ways they, they might present themselves. God, keep us safe from the corruption of the world. Keep us safe from, from everything that, that brings us fear in our lives. God, and there's so much, so much now that, that just gives us fear. So many, so many different things. And we pray, God, that that you would be with us and you would walk with us through, through this time. And as we, we move forward, God, in, in this, the steps of reopening, we pray that, that we would be able to sing your praise. We pray that you would guide us. We pray that you would direct us. Give us open hearts and open minds to, to do what it is that you would call us to do as, as a church, to keep everybody safe, to do good, to do no harm, and ultimately to stay in love with, with you. We sing your praises because you are our great redeemer. You are our God and our king. And we sing all the triumphs of your grace. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
God, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. And as we close our time this morning, we, we thank you, God, for all that you have done for us, all that you will do through us. We ask, God, that as we go forth into the world, that your blessing would be on us, that your peace would be with us, and that your grace would go before us and would be in us. We pray, God, that we would be models of that grace and that we would sing your praise this day and always. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As you go forth, go forth and into the world and be blessed. May the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Go in peace. We'll see you next week.